what I want to do is go and Emmet, and I create one of the columns if it's consistent, and then I just duplicate it, right? So I'm going to do that technique here. I'm going to create a row, and then here, instead of creating all three, I'm just going to do medium four columns, right? Because it's a three column layout. I'm not going to do the panel like I had before because I don't see any sort of background containing it, but we have an image is the first thing, right? So how, how wide would we want an image in general, right? I'll get into this more, but I usually like to say like 450. If it's something that's going to be in like a three column or a card style layout, it's kind of a good round number to use. So I'm going to use the placeholder again. And I'm going to do 450 and I don't know how tall that is. Let's just say 300. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Okay. And we say maybe it's a little bit taller. Maybe it's 350. And the idea here is like not to get really detailed and do like 53, 51. You just want kind of the basic essence of what we're trying to copy or build, right? So it's a little bit closer. Um, and then we have some sort of text, right? It looks like a header to me. So maybe it's like an H4. And this is a content section, right, with a period. Let's see how that looks. Pretty close, right? And then we have some sort of paragraph. And then there's another thing in, um, in Emmet, if you're using two, called lorem. You can just add lorem text, and you can say how long you want it, like one character. So it's a very useful thing to remember. I'll just add the lorem text, right? And that saves a lot of time too. So I have a lot of experience with this and I can kind of recognize those patterns because I work with foundation a lot. So you kind of have to play around, right? So maybe I'm like, oh, that looks like a, an H5 and then it's maybe too small and then you kind of bump it up or bump it down. You kind of iterate, see what it looks like. You can undo it and then kind of rough things in. So it's kind of like when you're painting, you'd use these big paint brushes first, do big strokes because you have a large canvas. It's going to take forever if you have like a little tiny brush. We're doing the same thing, but like with code, right? I guess in our mind, so to speak. All right, cool. So that looks pretty much like the same thing as the other ones. So I'll just grab that whole chunk. And in Sublime, there's duplicate, but you could copy and paste. So now I have three of those, right? And then we have this right here. Like, what, what else do we have for CSS beyond this? I mean, there's a lot of, like, really specific things with fonts and that kind of thing. But from, like, a big stroke perspective, like, can you guys think of anything else CSS-wise that you use a lot? Which, what's that? Colors? Yeah. So the other ones that are going to be used a lot, and you're going to be constantly doing this as background, right, which is going to set the background color. So in this case, I'll set it to um, this blue, right? And what else? There's another one similar to the background for the color, right? And what does color do? So, so color, and I'll just put right, a note here, font. Color is the fonts, right? And then we'll set it to some sort of other color that's really obvious, like red. And that is the wrong one, right? This is what we're going to do for the font, red. And then we have another one for border, right? I'll make that violet. And there's two ways to do this. There's the shorthand with border, but there's also border color. And it could be set independently for all four borders, right? So you have a lot of control. So what else? What, like if we're like making big strokes, like what else would we use a lot? Hmm? Display. So what would you use display for? Inline. But do you do that really commonly? Set it to inline or? Inline block, yeah, okay. So I display. All right. I would say along with that is probably float. It's used a lot. Float and float right.
Another common one that you're going to use a lot too in CSS is you start to build more interactive prototypes is going to be display none, right? Or hidden, right? Often what you're going to want to do as you get more advanced, you're going to break that out into a separate class so you can just apply to things and remove it. So what else? We've got float, display, display hidden. What's that? The hover, it's used a lot for the display states on buttons, right? Hover, and it's a pseudo selector, right? And then on the hover state, you can change everything. And there's a bunch of other ones. There's like hover, active, right? There's, there's a bunch of different ones. So it's not super complicated, but the biggest thing is we want to kind of be consistent. So this is like a button, and it's like a very obvious example, right? So it, it becomes less obvious when you start interacting within the framework. But we're going to go and inspect some of the stuff in Foundation, and like let's break it apart and see if they're following the same types of conventions, right? And you can see how you can get into trouble really quick. It's just like with CSS, with CSS pollution. Same thing with jQuery. If you leave it too open, pretty soon you click on stuff and like everything's running that interaction, right? So we've got this. This is you know for our album selection. And then here, we're going to kind of do something similar, right? So the first thing is we want to select these buttons, right? And so we could do that. Um, a number of different ways, but you know it, it just depends on what we're going to do here. I think probably we want to do like a toggle, right? So like if I select album, it turns the other two off, right? And if I select genre, it turns the other two off. This seems like a pretty appropriate course of action. Does everyone agree? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So let's do that. The first thing we need to do is to be able to select these buttons, and if I look at it. We have music by type, which is a UL. So same thing in jQuery. I'm going to do dot music by type. And then I'm going to do li, right? Because this is the click handler that we're going to do. And then we'll do on click and do this function nonsense again. Clicked, right? And then we'll go here, and we'll say, does it work? Looks like it's working. I can test it a few times. And so I can rest assured that it is, in fact, those buttons that are doing something. And so what's the difference here, though? So we can't really do the same thing, right? If we go and just copy this toggle class active, it's not going to work as expected, right? So we go here. It doesn't turn anything off. It just toggles, right? So there's two other things that we can do. One is called add class right, in jQuery. And so we can do that. And you'll see it's adding the class, but that's only part of the problem. right? So we'll add the class, but we'll need to remove the rest of them. So the question is, how do we select all these buttons? Well, we can select these buttons in the exact same way as we did up here. right? So if we go first, before we set that one to active, and we do Remove class active. It's going to remove all the active classes and then only add for the single one, which is the one that was clicked, right? And the one that was clicked, we know because of the, this keyword, right? Because it's being passed in through the function above. Correct. We open up the grid. Okay. We can actually look at the source of how Foundation is created and see what's going on, right? And we could look at those grid row mix in. And you see here the behavior is false. This is the default, right? That's what we're interested in. And if we look at the grid column, columns false, everything's false by default except for float, right? So I, I don't know why they list it that way. I think it's more useful to know what the defaults are because you can remove them. But either way. And if you're curious about how Foundation is doing anything, you can go look at the components and and check out all this stuff, and you can learn a lot of really more advanced SAS techniques, right? Cool. So we've got grid column four. So let's see what happens. Cool. It doesn't seem to be working for some reason. I believe it's because we're going to have to put it in another wrapper. 
So let's try and do that first. So we've got section, class, portfolio, semantic. Let's make sure I'm spelling it correctly. I'm working on the wrong one. So that's probably what's going on. So let's move these up here. There we go. But you'll see the problem is we got to get something outside the grid. And it's really the same, even though we're using the semantic mixed ends, right? And so this is where it becomes a little bit problematic. So if we're to think about semantic HTML, and if we think about HTML5 elements represent content, they don't represent visual styling, and divs are used for visual styling, we're going to want to wrap it with a div because that background color has nothing to do with content necessarily. Maybe it does, right? Or the visual styling is the row. So you have to kind of make a decision. And neither one is ne necessarily perfect. It's like, which is the most imperfect in your imperfect world? So I would say in this case, what we're going to want to do is to have the section represent the color. So I'm going to go and create another row. But then the question is like, well, what am I going to call it, right? What would be like a collection of portfolio? I mean, I guess we could call it a, a div and call it websites or something like that. Like it's, it's not perfect. Like how would you describe that content in an ideal way? I don't know that there is. So let's wrap it in a div and we'll call it websites. Not that that's the best example, but we'll go for it. And we're going to create in here dot websites. And we're going to move the grid row in there, right? So now we get our full width over here, and we get our nice column, right? And then again, it becomes, and this is kind of a more complex example, like, well, what about the card, right? Is the card content, or is the card the row? Because the problem will be, and if I duplicate this three times, right, they're going to end up kind of with this nice spacing but if I change the background and the article, and I'm going to change it to red just to show the example. Sorry, not color, but background. It's going to be like edge to edge. So we have to do the same thing, right? We've got to wrap it and have like this additional thing. So we have to have like an extra thing because we're stretching the color all the way out. Then we're going to have the grid, right? And then we're going to have to have something else to represent the card. And then the question is, is the card the content? Or is the, or like, which one's the article? Is the article the card? Or is the article the column? What do you guys think? What's the best call there?